All right, all right, all right out there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel in the mighty name of Jesus. This is your brother Zachariah being Israel coming at you live, right? And uh, on this Friday morning, right? If, if you know, in case you forgot, right? God's time go from evening to evening, right? So coming in on, uh, you know, uh, the sixth day, right? We're gonna have a little discussion here, right? And what we're gonna talk about briefly is, okay, separating yourself from the poison of these systems and organized factions that can't hold water, right? Okay, so this blog discussion is going to be addressing your dependence upon man's energy, trying to establish yourself in this walk with Jesus the Christ, right? Something that really needs to be observed, okay? Definitely needs to be observed, okay? So the bottom line up front, let's go ahead and get off into this right here, right? We have been a people that have been, uh, you know, uh, tuned in to... Dealing with systems, dealing with a system, dealing with a system, right? It's always a, you know, like an organized uh, system of worship, organized system of gathering, organized system of doing a lot of things, right? Okay, so coming into the knowledge of the truth of God, right? The first thing out the gate, right, is we must understand the Lord have commanded us to separate ourselves and be separate, right? and come out from among these factions and systems in the world that cannot hold water, right? And, and I'm not just talking about uh, the Roman Christian world. I'm talking about even, even among the house of Israel, right? Those of us that uh, say we uh, have knowledge of the truth, many of us have come into this word, right? Gotten baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins and all kinds of things, right? We're running after keeping, trying to run after keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, right? You even have to watch watch where you're going, even with that. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to talk a little bit here, right? Because it seems to me, right? And this is Brother Zachariah Ben Israel. I can't, I cannot, uh, you know, persuade anyone or try to tell you what you ought to do, right? I only understand what I need to do according to what I can read in the word of God, right? And according to what I read in the word of God, I've been motivated, right? To get in a standalone situation, right? And, and take care of my business you know, with the Lord, right? And run after what I know the Lord has commanded in his holy word, right? Because there's a whole lot of people that love to do some stuff called skip a beat, right? You, I mean, I'm telling you, man, you know what I'm talking about? So the bottom line, I don't have time to play games, okay? Because a lot of people are reading the book. A lot of people are talking about scriptures and a lot of things like this right here, right? But your pro your productivity towards the application of the word of God, right, is lacking, right? Or either there's other issues, right? Okay, how can we be a congregation of people that have come to the knowledge of the truth and keep having the same issues? Brothers not doing the will of God. Brothers not coming together. Brothers not providing for the women and the children. And all this right here, they're the weaker vessels. We supposed to be the strong vessels, right? So the whole thing is, right? Why is this stuff not going on? I keep seeing it, right? So uh, I've had to move on and go do what I know has to be done for the Lord and the Lord's business, right? I don't have time to get caught up with people trying to figure out if they're going to serve Jesus or not. I don't have time, you know, to, you know, to fumble around with people that seem to, I don't know. I don't know what you think you're doing, right? I have no idea what you think you're doing out there, right? You say you serve the Lord. You say you love Jesus and all these things, right? There's a lot of bum, uh, gum bumping and everybody's talking. There's a lot of chatter, right? But there ain't no work being done. There's no work being done, right? We're not maintaining the women, brothers. I'm going to tell y'all now. On what I see on the ground, that the women are, you know, we're lacking in the area of taking care of our sisters and, and the children, right? That's the bottom line up front. There's a lot of women out there that don't have husbands, right? There's a lot of women out there that need support, right, from the brothers, right? 
to give you advice for simple things like a broke down car, right? Trying to go out to buy a car, right? Trying to deal with, uh, you know, uh, home maintenance issues, right? Um, assisting with, uh, you know, uh, a number of different things. You know, we can sit here and talk about a lot of different things, right? But there's a situation where, you know, our women, especially our women, they don't have husbands, right? They don't have nobody around them, right? We got to constantly support them. And I don't see it being done, right? So a lot of y'all, you know, um, I'm gone, man. I'm rolling because I don't have time. I, I can't, I can't, I can't take time to try to figure out what you're trying to do. And what is it that you, what your intentions are, and all this right here, right? And I don't have time to ride along with you if I can't understand what you're doing, right? Because we read the same Bible. We serve the same God, right? In the name of Jesus, according to his holy word, right? We keep in the same law and all these things, right? But there's a lot of people that you stand still. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing but saying, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath on the Sabbath day. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. This is all that's going on, right? So the mentality of the males, right? We're failing our women and children, and thus we fail in the Lord. That's right, because we're supposed to be providing the things that our people need, right? For us to be able to keep the feast days and all this stuff right here. Because everything that we do as a, as a, as a house, as the house of Israel, we build it from the ground up. We cannot, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, attach ourselves to the system out here, right? We can't fool around with the system because they're not keeping no laws, no statutes, no commandments, right? And all the stuff right here, right? And they do not understand the feast days of the Lord. They don't know how these feast days pertain to salvation, but we are learning this, and we do know that, right? So we got to provide the place for the women and children to be able to serve the Lord, right? We got to provide that, right? We got to provide the place for them to come and eat before the Lord, all of this. And I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it, right? So the whole thing is, I'm not a dude that's going to stand by on the sideline and keep watching, you know, uh, lack of motivation and no productivity towards the Lord and his business. That's bottom line up front. Bottom line up front, I got to move out and go do what I got to do. The Lord set forth the word of God. He told us in the word of God, right? He let us know through Paul the apostle. What did he say? Seek out the old, your own salvation with fear and with trembling, right? Because everybody ain't going to be on the same level. Everybody's love for Christ is going to be different. Some people are going to be motivated about Christ. Some people are going to get up and be zealous and put forth work and put in work, right? And they're going to do that due diligence for that. Things that the Lord has commanded in the word of God. And then some people are going to sit on the sideline and wait for all the people that's moving to go do the work. And you're just going to sit back and enjoy the ride, right? So when the food get done, then you'll come and eat it. Right? Or whatever else is prepared, you, you, you just show up, right? And say, Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath. And you're not doing, you, you haven't contributed one thing, right? You haven't put one foot or one finger into the work. And all this right here, right? And I can understand that when it comes to the women. I can understand that when it comes to the children, right? But not the men. That's right. The holy order of the Most High God. We are the heads of the women, right? So we got to lead the women. And we're not willing to lead. Apparently, we're not willing to lead. Everybody is not willing to lead, right? And the whole thing is, right? We know somebody got to be in charge. Somebody got to lead from the front. Somebody got to somebody got to be the leader to establish leadership, right? There's a lot of undisciplined people in the house of Israel, whole bunch of things that's going on where we having a bunch of discipline problems. That's right. But we're not handling the matters of our flesh, right? We're not handling the matters of our flesh, right? You say you're walking in the spirit. We can go to Galatians and read that stuff, right? But what is the application of it? When you are an, an accuser, you're accusing your brother, you're accusing your sister, you're judging people, you're being judgmental as hell, 
right? But there ain't nothing coming from you but a bunch of mouth and accusation and all this kind of stuff, contempt, right? And debate and all this kind of stuff right here, right? But there's no pro no productivity from you, none whatsoever at all, right? That's the bottom line. So the bottom line up front, what I would what what I'm trying to pass off to you right now and motivate you and stimulate thought for you out there that might witness this video right here, right? You better get up and do your you better get up and do your due diligence. Cause it's your salvation online. That's right. You can't run with the slothful. You can't do that right there. The Lord got something heavy for the wicked and slothful servant. It's called weeping and gnashing the deep. We can read this kind of stuff right here, right? So who got time to play? Anybody got time to keep messing around with you and all this stuff right here? Then you always hollering about everything. Good Lord, man. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Sin is not imputed where there is no law. Get it through your heads. Sin is not imputed where there is no law, right? So listen to that music, right? And being around the elements and things around us, that should not, that should not bother you. You know why? Because it's the Lord that should drive you, not the world and not the rudiments thereof, not something that's playing on the radio or some music that's playing. And all this right here, right? That's the bottom line up front. There's a lot of things, right? And I know and I understand, right? We don't do stuff that promote wickedness or supports wickedness or shares in the hand of any type of wicked thing. But at the same time, you gotta understand you in this world. You out here in this world, right? And we're going to be here until the coming of the Lord. It's not going to change. Every day you wake up, the devil's going to wake up too. They're going to be out there waiting for you. As soon as you come outside, that's what the whole thing is, right? So you better get, you better start thinking about the fact that you need to be doing some spiritual exercise, okay? So when you see people in the hood and you hear some music and stuff like this right here, Right? Why are we getting judgmental all of a sudden? You see, like folks getting judgmental and all the stuff right here. Because I'm gonna tell you now, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to music some music because I'm a, I'm an Israelite with the blues. Judah mourneth in the gates of the rough language. Our people are black unto the ground. We in a famine of the word of God, in a famine for all the other things that the Lord have set forth for us. Thus we are the shore. He said, My people are the shore. For the lack of knowledge. That's right. Because our people have rejected knowledge. The Lord said he's going to reject us. Right? And this is the situation that we find ourselves in. Right? So in this situation of mourning out here. Right? You can't fall into a pity party. And all this stuff right here. Right? And you cannot get out into the mindset that you're going to think that you're going to walk around in some kind of holy bubble. Now you can do that if you want. And by far, I'm not telling you not to do it, right? But I'm letting you know what Zechariah ben Israel is about, okay? I'm not going to walk around like some Roman Catholic. I'm not going to be floating around in some magical bubble like something you see on the Wizard of Oz. Talking about the good, what, the good witch from the East or something and all the stuff right here. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to get off into none of that foolishness, right? Bottom line, up front. It's up front. Rugged and raw, as it is written in the word of God. The Lord said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and show the house of Israel their sin. Right? He said, rebuke them sharply that they might be sound in faith. This is the bottom line up front, right? So on team ROI, I don't have time for fake rhymes. I'm not going to make room for it at all, right? So if you're somebody that's holier than thou, you're looking down the side of your nose and you worry about every little thing that come along, right? You might not be comfortable with the ROI team because that ain't how we roll, right? We're not finna whine about everything that go on. You can only deal with the things that you can control. Most of what you can control is really just yourself, right? You can't control the sin. You can't control the people that's committing sin. You can't commit... You cannot control the people that's making the music. You can't control the people that's producing the part. You can't control these things, but you can control yourself, right? So what it is, you got to know within you 
what's going down, right? So when you when we come in contact with things around us, you should be able to navigate yourself. That's where the whole thing is. You shouldn't freak out because the music is being played, right? Or somebody is singing a song or something is going on, right? Somebody's bumping something in their car. And all this right here, why are you freaking out over this kind of stuff? What does it do to you, right? Because you don't want to listen to that music. If you don't want to listen to that music, you're not a musical person, right? And all the stuff right here, you're not outgoing. You're not approachable in that manner, right? Then why do you think everybody needs to be like you? Why? When you see somebody else that's different, right? Remember what the book says. Sin is the transgression of God's law, period. Sin is not imputed where there is no law, right? So if you're going to write complain, right, and start being judgmental and pointing the finger, right, you got to show it to me in the book. Show me the law that's being violated. If you can't show it to me and show me where I can read that, right, then I don't have time for the conversation. I don't. You're not going to talk me into nothing. I'm not going to let nobody talk me into nothing. Because this system that our, our people love, right, you, many people are coming to the truth now with a desire to be a part of a system. So how are you going to come out of the system and come and create a system and become a system? Now you need to be obedient to the Lord and do what does say the Lord, right? And do what he said in his house. That's the bottom line. Within the body of Christ, do what the Lord said. Why are you trying to bring, bring a mentality from some sort of form or fashion or some faction of a system to other people. I'm not a part of a system. I'm not going to be a part of a system. I'm not going to do it. The Lord said he made wise the son. I don't need Bible college. I don't need seminary school. I don't need none of that stuff that's out here in the world that got people going contrary to the word of God. Right? And it's simple. If you separated and isolated from camps, and all the stuff right here, yeah, we're supposed to, you know, uh, make sure we congregate, right? We're supposed to make sure that we have a holy gallon. We're commanded to have a holy gallon, right? So you do the best you can where you are with what you have. This is the bottom line, because who going to come by the building for you? I'm still waiting on it right now. Who going to come and, and purchase the building? For the people that's isolated in desolate areas like me, who gonna come and pay the money? Who gonna pay the money and buy the building and provide all the resources we need right now today, right within the next ninety days that we got a building to go to, that we got a building to go keep the feast days at? I've been sitting back looking and watching and waiting, right? And the waiting period is over for Zach. You understand me? That's right. The Lord blessed me with property. And I'm using it. That's the bottom line up front. I'm setting up my operation here where I am to do what does say the Lord. Because Jesus had Moses write it to you in Leviticus 23rd chapter. What did he say in verse 3? It's the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Right? He told us through the prophet Ezekiel that he'll be a small sanctuary for us wherever we are. So when there's two or more gathered in the name, the Lord is there in the midst. So if you believe God, go ahead. Do what you got to go do, right? So if you wait on four or five other people to come and be a part of some, what, what the get along game? Everybody finna get together now and all this stuff right here. And you trying to drag everybody with you, right? You might be waiting for a while. Because this Israelite is foolish. This Israelite is lazy. This Israelite is wicked. This Israelite is selfish. This Israelite is self-centered. This Israelite is judgmental. It's a lot of things that's going on among the house of Israel that keep us from being productive and doing the things that we should be doing, that we should be able to do that by now. But there many of us that have been exposed to this word and coming to the knowledge of the truth, been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin. So what is the issue with you brothers? Y'all men that don't take phone calls, you guys that don't call your brothers, that don't connect, right? You get you get some kind of, I don't know, you start doing some kind of one-sided thing where you're doing what you do, right? But you're not working with your brothers and your sisters. 
right? I don't never see you. And when we was doing work out in there on the ground, y'all didn't have no ideas. Y'all didn't have no vision, no vision, no ideas, right? No productivity, right? No drive to take care of nobody, not even really yourself, right? So you weren't even trying to take care of nobody, right? Because you're so self-centered and so selfish, right? And so judgmental, you have an inability to get up off your behind and love your neighbor as yourself, name me your brother and your sister that you keep saying, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. What have you done for them lately? Huh? Who did you call? Who are you serving besides yourself? What are you giving to the people? What are you giving to anybody else? What is it that you're really examining that you're supposed to be presenting for the Lord? That's this thing to think about. Right? Those are the things that I think about. Right? So every day, I'm in the ping pong game. Every day, I'm moving. Every day, the Lord's seeing, right? There's something that I need to improve. There's something I need to work on. There's something I need to provide. There's somebody I need to help. There's somebody I need to assist. There's somebody I need to motivate and show the word of God to. There's somebody I need to go help and encourage. There's something that can be done that Jesus and the Father are going to be glorified. Not you, not me, but the God He. It's about his kingdom. So simply what I'm saying, if the Lord, Jesus the Christ, have chose you to do something and called you to do something, why are you running to men? Why you got to get their approval? Why does it seem that you have to have, uh, you know, like a power full of people, four or five people got to go along with what you're thinking or what you say you fear to do? Or either they're going to help you decide what you're going to do because you're afraid to use your own head. You're afraid to use your mind, right? Every Sabbath, we've been taught this word of God. And you're not understanding, this word of God is being taught to us by the elders and the teachers and the leaders. They're not just, they're not just doing this stuff for their help, right? This stuff is for a reason, right? We got to be reminded of the truth. Reminded of the word of God. We got to be taught the word of God. We got to be encouraged in the word of God and all this stuff right here because we're supposed to use that word of God and use that knowledge and wisdom to develop the thing that we need to develop as a nation of people. It's trying to raise up now to come back to the Lord. That's right. So the vision of the men has to be centered in the word of God, right? It has to mirror what Jesus says in the Holy Word because he's the high priest. Jesus said, now get to the Father, but by me. But I'm lying up front. I am the door. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus the Christ that the Bible speak of. So everything that's going on, right, has to be centered around what does say the Lord. That's it. And men got to have motivation. Men got to have drive. Men got to have vision. Men have to have the ability to lead. Men have to have the ability to help aid and assist and provide for the women and the children and the weaker vessels that dwell among us. And we got, he said, I asked y'all for the mind. We got to be there for each other. It's about a lot of front. And if we're not doing that, uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. It is, and a lot of these things I'm talking about get hid from Brother Daniel. It get hid from Brother Bowie. It get hid from all the leaders and the teachers, right? You're not really showing them your true self. You're not taking your mask off so they can really see your face and know who you are and understand what you're about. You sugarcoating stuff. You candy coating things, right? And you're using all these fast speeches and vain words to convince them that you love the Lord, right? But where is the productivity? If somebody had to look today, what is it that you've done for somebody other than you? That's the bottom line up front. It's something to think about, right? So this, this, this systematic way of thinking has to be examined. That's right, because we were people that were affected by a ruthless system of ungodliness, right? And all the stuff right here, right? And we have tendencies right now as a people to gravitate to the same ungodly systematic way 
of foolishness that got us in trouble with God to start with. That's the bottom line in front. That's right. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's about movement. It's about doing something. He said, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. You got to do something. Do something. That's the bottom line up front. Do it. Just like Nike. That's the whole thing. Right? And that's where, the, I mean, that's where I am with that. Right? And I don't understand why a lot of you brothers around, what, what is y'all deal? Some of y'all brothers ain't got no family. Some of y'all are single brothers and you ain't doing nothing for nobody. Nothing. Somebody got to call you. Somebody got to ring your phone, text your phone, leave 50 messages, beg you to do what you're supposed to be doing because the Lord has sent you forth to do it. Especially if you're in this government. If you didn't get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for missing your past sins and got that far along, then why in the world are you not giving? Why are you not sharing? Why are you not going to deal with anything that's, that's you know, that outside of yourself? You ain't doing that. You ain't calling uh, some of them people in isolated areas and say, hey, let's all go to breakfast. You know, after the Sabbath, Sunday morning. Let's get together and go eat breakfast. Right? Well, I'm in your neighborhood, so I'm going to ride by. Right? And we're going to stop and break bread. We're going to talk. And we're going to discuss this word of God. And we're going to, you know, bond with each other. And do something besides hollering on the Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. That's just, you know what? Sometimes they get aggravated. I don't know. How, I don't know how many of y'all might feel about that, but that thing right there, sometimes it get on my nerves. Listen to it. Seeing it go on. 50,000 text messages. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. If you if we live to see the Sabbath, of course it's a happy Sabbath. But what have we done between the Sabbaths? From Sabbath to Sabbath, what are we doing? How often do we hear from each other? How often do we go from house to house and break bread? Huh? How often do we go and just do a fish fry with each other? Because everybody got to eat, right? How often do we go and just be together just to have coffee? I've done that with some, with, with some of my brothers and sisters, right? I just showed up just to go, hey, look, you know what? Let's go over to the coffee shop and get some cocoa, some coffee or something like that, right? Let's just break bread. Let's talk. Let's let's bond. Let's do something. Ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody doing it. The gas prices that went up, now everybody's scared, right? You don't want to spend no money. You don't want to obligate yourself to do nothing past you. And then you think, that the Lord, gonna, he's supposed to give you stuff. He's supposed to allow you to prosper in this stuff. He's supposed to bless you and make things more abundant for you in your life and all the stuff right here, but you're not willing to do nothing. You ain't doing nothing. That's right. Lying to Brother Bowie now. Lying to Brother Daniel. Throwing smoke up people behind. And all the stuff right here. I don't roll like that. I'm telling you, tell you up front, I'm rough. Rugged, raw, and to the point. I ain't got time to be fumbling around in the dark. I don't. I'm not going to play with it. So some of y'all, I might run across out there. It, it is what it is, bro. We're going to do, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I'm going to roll out. And I, if I see you staggering, if I see you stalling, right, and all the stuff right here, and you're not acting, you're not showing me that you're part of the team, Jesus, right, to get up and do the Lord's business and do his will, and do the work that he commanded us to go do. Right? I'm not going to spend much time messing with you, dog. I'm finna roll out. I'm going to get in that Jesus truck, man, and I'm going to disappear around the corner somewhere. Because I don't have time for it. I ain't got time for that. And if you really understood the truth, you don't have time for it. Don't you know Bible prophecy is at its height right now? This stuff is right on top of us now. What we going to do I've had sisters call me and contact me, right? Talking about, they're worried about different things. You had that appointed time when we got to flee. What plans are we making? What are we communicating about? If the Lord bring the situation on us, well, we got to grab everybody we can and get to getting. 
Well, who who gonna do something? What what what's the plan? Right? We're gonna move in chaos. Right? That's what the whole thing is, right? Because we you know what I'm talking about. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Right? We have to work out, we have to plan our work and work our plan. It's bottom line up front. These women should not be concerned about all this stuff because there's enough men that's supposed to be servants of God, right? Around them that we should be able to comfort them, right? And have them feeling strong about what they say the Lord and working with them to keep our women in positions of power with Jesus Christ and the Father to strive to be that Proverbs 31 woman for the Lord. That's what the whole thing is, but there's no support. No support. We don't even get together and eat out no more. That's right. Those are the things I was doing. I was always trying to get everybody together, right? To go have dinner together, periodically see each other, do things together, right? And all the stuff here between the Sabbaths. We've been commanded to keep the Sabbath. We're going to do that. Or, you know, the consequence for not doing it. And all this stuff right here. But between the Sabbath, what are we doing? What are we working on? What are we developing? What are we doing? Where where is the where is the, the role model and leadership for the young boys that's coming up? And the young women, the young girls and young boys that's going into, you know, uh, teen, uh, teenage years, young adult, and all this stuff right here. Where, what, what are we doing? What are we providing for them? Why, why, why is it that you're not, I mean, how can you be so surprised that a lot of our young girls, right, they're around the truth, they done heard it, right? They look at the Sabbath and they're dealing with the Sabbath and they know about this truth and all this stuff right here, but they still running out here in the world and end up pregnant. That's right. Our young men doing the same thing. They run straight to the world, right, and get off into some, some, some sort of la la situation. Right, and now they they are they they are they're creating families prematurely, where there's no money, there's no house, there's no sustainment, but we bring the children in the world and piling more and more responsibility on irresponsible people. That's the bottom line up front, right? And then when the children start to grow up, they get caught up in the drama because of your unproductive foolishness where you're just not doing anything. You're just not working. That's the bottom line. You're selfish, right? You're self-centered. You're selfish. You're about yourself and all the stuff right here. You want people to accept you, not the Lord. That's right. It's, you're more concerned about yourself. But it's about Jesus and his kingdom, him and the Father. It's about God's salvation. His plan for salvation for all mankind that's going to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments and do what does say the Lord. That's what this is about. But where's, where you at? Where you at? Where are you? Where are you? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Peace in Jesus. Happy Sabbath. This is all I'm hearing. But I ain't seeing no work on the ground. No phone calls. I can't even reach out city to city and town to town to say, hey, brother, you in the truth down there, right? So look, let's, who's down there with you? Let's get them all together, right? And the midst of these uh, father season when they have the holidays going, right? Let's let's gather our people. Let's come up with something that we're going to create together to keep our people from getting homesick because everybody around them in the flesh is fooling around with holidays and they hate the holy days. Family issues come on and we're going to do holidays. But we have commanded to deal with the holy days, right? So we're not even doing anything out here. We ain't doing nothing. Running around hollering and stuff, right? Calling in on the Sabbath day, hopping Sabbath, and texting and stuff like this here. But where's the work? Where's the work? Who's doing the work? Who's doing the work? Everybody got something to say, but everybody ain't doing nothing. Everybody ain't working together. You lying about being a part of the body of Christ. You sugarcoat stuff and you blowing smoke up somebody by hand like you really about this kingdom and you really about this law and really about what God says, 
Right? But I can see it in you. Ain't no productivity. I ain't heard nothing from you. I ain't seen you do nothing. Right? But me, I'm out here all the time, dog. Moving. Teaching and preaching. Pushing people toward the book. Right? And gathering with those that will allow me, right, to, to, to bring them in. Right? So we can keep the Sabbath. Right? So we can keep the peace days. Right? So we can be together in the midst of all the troubles and decide, you know what? We're going to have a day for all the kids. We're going to take all the kids and we're going to deal with the children all day. We're going, we're going to take them to the park. We're going to go to the aquarium. Stuff like that between the Sabbaths. Right? Go to the aquarium and walk the aquarium together. Go to the North Carolina Zoo and walk the zoo together. Right? And, and just be out doing something together. We're not doing anything. That's all I got to say. So, hey, man, you know what I'm talking about? I'm not in the system. Let me look back at my commentary. What did it say? Separate yourself from the poison of these systems and organized factions that can't hold water. And I don't care who's saying it. And I ain't just talking about the wrong Christian world. I'm talking about the house of Israel, too. Don't forget, Jesus is going to deal with us first. He coming to his own first. Then he's going to deal with the other nations. Don't forget that, right? So uh, think about change. Think about not being judgmental. Think about not being an accuser. Think about loving and serving, loving and serving somebody according to the word of God other than yourself. Do something for somebody. Give somebody something. Go, man, gas prices done went up, right? Just single mothers out there with children that don't have husbands. They don't have dual income. Stuff like this right here. If you got something, go help a sister fill her gas tank up while she can go to work, right? And then she don't have to decide, well, with the money I got left, uh, I'm buy gas or food. If somebody need help every day. So do something. Bust a move, Jack. You know what I'm talking about? So peace in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Brother Zachariah being Israel. And we move into the sixth day. It's time to get busy, dog. It's time to get busy. We got the sun down tomorrow to have something on the table for the Lord. Peace in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Brother Zachariah being Israel. And I'm out. Shalom.